with the Snapdragon 855, you get the Adreno 640 graphics processing unit. And what Qualcomm is terming this as Elite Gaming. Now, Elite Gaming gets Vulkan API 1.1. Uh, for those people who play games on PCs, you would have heard the words DirectX, OpenGL. Vulkan is like that. However, it has a few advantages. It is cross-platform. That means, yes, it extends two phones. And the second part is it also is a lot more fire efficient and handles the GPU and CPU balance a lot better. That means between the CPU and the graphics unit, it balances the entire load so that there's no bottlenecks anywhere. Uh, along with this, uh, this GPU is also very special to us because it's got cinematic post-processing. And why this is important, I'll talk to you about this in the later stages. Uh, it's got better depth of field when you're gaming, the 3D graphics have a better depth of field. It's got high dynamic rate or HDR. Makes those screens pop. Again, very important for the K20 Pro. And of course, better physics. Now, both CPU and GPU have seen a jump of 45% and 20% each. And these are obviously big major numbers, big numbers for any flagship <coughs> chip. And this, along with a 7 nanometer chipset, means that it's also more power efficient. Uh, the CPU is 20% more power efficient than A45 and 30% more power efficient from the GPU side compared to the previous generation. Incredible numbers. What does it all mean? You obviously get incredible performance. If you have to compare performance, so if you look at last year's numbers, so you had the iPhone 10 running the A11, and that was at about 245 in terms of Android 2 score. And then, of course, you had the 845, which itself was a great chip. And that you saw with our friends at Poco, the Poco F1, that obviously beat the iPhone with a healthy margin, that's 291. Then, the new iPhones have a 812 Bionic, it's improved. And that clocks and at about 356. Any guesses where the K20 is? One. It is at 388, making it one of the fastest phones available today. Now, what do you do with all this performance, right? Uh, for most of our new fans, the very first answer that comes is better gaming. And our thought was, how do we make this gaming even better? So with this, we are introducing the second generation game logo. And this makes a lot of difference. Uh, it enhances the overall gameplay by doing a couple of things that we all expect. You get better performance, it's optimized, uh, you have better network optimization as well, so that your things are lower. However, you've gone one step ahead. You've done something that nobody else has. the overall touch response. So touch latency can be adjusted as per your requirements. Again, very important. For example, if you're playing, say, a, a battle royale game, right? how quickly does that touch respond to your fire button so that you're able to kill the other enemy on the net, other side of the world? Uh, makes a lot of difference in your overall gameplay. The second one, which again is very new, is the overall visual enhancements. You can see more with the second generation game turbo on the K20 Pro. And I'll talk about both of these in a bit. And the last part, which probably we don't really take into consideration very often, but it is becoming more and more important in gaming, is sound. We've got sound quality optimization. Now, suppose you are playing a multiplayer game, you can actually hear the footsteps accurately coming from different directions. And in call, uh, in game call optimization, when you are playing a multiplayer game and you're talking to your friends, it also helps with background noise reduction. And we all have been in a particular game 
where this one guy left his mic on and kept chattering, right? Or there's some music happening, or his mother is calling at the back. Uh, hopefully, all of this kind of gets sorted with this. So, um, I actually want to talk about two of these things. One is uh, the touch enhancement and the enhanced visuals. From an enhanced visuals perspective, you actually get massive advantage. With enhanced visuals 2.0, you actually get night vision in games which are really dark. So, for example, if you are playing, uh, let's say, PUBG Mobile, and you've got a day and night match happening, at night, you need to look around for those night vision goggles. How many people play a Battle Royale game here? Okay. So people in the middle are slightly boring. All these guys are happening. Uh, it becomes really important because when you are playing at night, and if, suppose you don't have those night vision glasses that you have to find in game, with the K20 Pro, you'll still be able to see what's happening in the dark. So it's, it's almost giving a massive advantage to people uh, versus, I mean, I think this is the next best thing versus hacking. So don't hack, that's not good for anyone. But this one is giving you a hardware advantage. So look at it, night vision on versus a typical smartphone and how the renders change. Now when you are comparing this and when you are playing a competitive game, the next part that is most important is touch. And we want to make the touch the absolute toxic that you can get on a smartphone. Here you can actually change your touch response from a sampling rate of 120 hertz all the way to 180 hertz, a 50% jump. So depending on how good you are in the game, how quickly you want your in-game character to react, this makes a whole lot of difference coming in with just the touch. I think that pretty much nobody else has. Uh, so the K20 Group again gives you an advantage in gaming. Uh, with and not just the touch part of it, uh, the other part is, for example, if you've got a gun, which is not an automatic, and you've got first sort of mode, so what you do, you do repeated taps. Right? You tap once, twice, twice, uh, as quickly as possible, so that you get your bullets out. So that also we improved the overall touch response or sensitivity. So when you tap very quickly, three times, it will detect all three times. It will not merge it into only two taps or one. And this also starts making a difference in terms of gameplay. And this obviously, all of this is absolutely important because you've got all that power, you will be gaming, and all of this adds to that gaming experience, giving you a gaming experience like none other out there. So you've got a really powerful chipset and optimizations, and we will have an alpha configuration of up to 8 GB of DDR4X, clocked at 213 megahertz as well as a storage variant going all the way to 256 GB, which is via UFS 2.1. Now, this is a lot of power under the hood. Now, to cool that off and to ensure that you don't face any lags, even if you're playing for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, we have added an all-new 8-layer graphite cooling system. Uh, it is largely so that heat is drawn away from your system very quickly, and you can stay at the peak performance without any throttling for a longer time. Uh, how is it different? A typical smartphone, they just have one particular layer. On the K20 Pro, it is actually on both sides, right? So right on the top and the bottom, you've got uh, the graphite cooling solution coming in. However, on the main side, this actually is an eight-layer graphite cooling system, which means faster heat dissipation. Uh, how fast? When we look at an uh, equivalent smartphone, uh, the iPhone 10 has a 40, nano, a 40 micron meter uh, single layer graphite, and the K20 Pro again has a 40 micron meter but eight layer. The difference between the heat dissipation of these two devices is 650% makes a huge difference when you are using this cooling solution. So overall, from a performance perspective, no holds barred. You've got a flagship gaming experience. You've got Snapdragon 855, 
that comes with the all-new Cryo 4 and 5 architecture. You've got the Adreno 640 GPU with all the enhancements that you saw. Of course, we've added to it by putting a second generation game turbo and you saw all the visual enhancements as well as touch enhancements. You have up to 8 GB of LP DDR4 XRAM and a cooling system to match all of it. It's an 8 layer graphite cooling system. Now that's philosophy number one to get the flagship right. I'll move on to the next one. And this is something that we call Aura Design. Now Aura Design uh, is something that is, is that I, we have introduced uh, very recently, about five months back. Uh, it's a change in the overall philosophy. The Disney series for the last four and a half years or so has obviously been known for incredible functional design. On top of that, we've added two more parameters for designing all the phones this year. You have an immersive experience. How immersive is that phone? And of course, a big focus on craftsmanship. The materials that we use and the way it looks, all of that matters. And culminating into all of this is something that we call Aura Prime. This is the peak design that we've managed to achieve on the Redmi series. And let me introduce the very first variant or very first color to you here. Now this is the glacier blue. It's does not look like any other phone out there in the market. It's absolutely stunning looking, but not just that, it's also built really well. The entire frame is built out of industrial grade aluminium. And if, if you can see the glass beautifully merging into that frame, it just looks like one whole unibody device. Uh, the glass that I'm talking about is a 3D curved glass, and even at the back, it's protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 5. And this glass, is curved. It's a 3D curved glass, but the curvature changes ever so slightly when you get to the bottom. Again, to match that frame, and of course, it gives you that great hand feel. Uh, while we used premium materials, what we did was another engineering marvel. Uh, if you look at, again, equivalent phones that have used materials like this, say the OnePlus 7 Pro or the Tennis Max, what they've not been able to do is manage the weight. It becomes unwieldy to hold after some time. For example, the One Plus Seven Pro is at 206 grams, while the Tennis Max is 208 grams. Now, without compromising on the build quality, without compromising on the materials, we managed to get the K20 Pro at just 191 grams. This makes it the lightest Pro full screen flagship in the market today. And not just that, obviously it's built well and looks stunning. We made these subtle design changes. For example, around the camera, you've got this photographic ring accent. Looks absolutely brilliant. Or the iconic red button. And this red button is actually going through all our variants. It looks absolutely stunning, and especially on the blue one. Uh, the red and blue, or the red and black, looks absolutely phenomenal. Uh, along with that, we made some more changes. For example, uh, LED notification light, yes, we are a flagship and we still have an LED notification light, uh, and it comes in like no other. We've got a very unique LED notification light up top. Talking about the build quality, the aluminum industrial grade frame, we've got a curve on the Corning Gorilla Glass 5 at the back with slightly different curvature, it's a 3D overall, and you've got accents like the holographic ring or the power button. And all of this has been designed along with the weight that I spoke about to give you that ergonomic fit. Over time, our designers have been thoughtfully working towards get, getting you that perfect hand feel. And that's what you get with a K20 Pro. Now that's about ergonomics. Let me get into the next color. <laughs> Now, that is the same red. Do you guys like it? Blue or red? Okay. All I heard was 
that was great. <laughs> All right. Uh, for you guys who are mostly wondering how is this happening, how is this dynamic pattern working, let me show you this one. Now, this is, again, very thoughtfully designed, and this happens with six different layers coming in and how the light plays off it. Of course, right at the top, you saw the twin curve glass pack, which is a Corning Gorilla Glass 5, but underneath that, you've got the gradient color and the holographic layer playing together. And this is what's giving you those different patterns flying in, right? And the last, the bottom one, is also really important because this is the reflective layer that puts that light back. What does it all mean? And focus on the last one because phone looks very different under low light. But in dim light, it looks like a really good gradient design coming in. But when you have harsher light, when you have a stronger light, it completely changes. And you start seeing that flame coming in. As you move that light around, these flames almost seem alive. And that starts looking extremely different than anything else that you've seen before. In fact, the device in itself looks very stunning. So here's a image of the flame red. This is a camera shot image. It's not a 3D render. And as you can see, the flame patterns really shining through. So it's all the six layers working together to give you a design like no other. Uh, but not just the red, even the blue, I agree, looks stunning. And the blue also plays really well with different lights. So when you move that light around, you start seeing this entire pattern emerging. Now these, as you can, un you can probably understand, the, the glacier blue and the flame red are inspired by the fire and ice design. Uh, but for the very first time on any of our devices, we are also having a second design philosophy. And this is slightly different from the fire and ice, and we're calling it inspired by carbon. <laughs> Yes, finally some people go black. So this one is my personal favorite. Uh, it still is a six layer design. That means under bright light you start seeing this depth to this Kevlar pattern. It looks absolutely stunning, but of course in my opinion I think it's the classiest. Manu and Raghu are on the red and blues, so we'll see what happens later. Uh, but this is not a regular Kevlar pattern. It's slightly different. What we've done is we've taken the standard Kevlar pattern that our friends over at Coco use, and then we've added a Mark Wilson pattern, giving you a very different effect, unlike any pattern that you would have seen with Kevlar designs or Kevlar films. Uh, and this obviously gives you a lot more premium aesthetic, as well as a very understated design. Uh, what you would also notice is some things have changed compared to the fire and ice design. For example, the camera is now red. And that red matched with black looks absolutely stunning. The power button is also red, so it all goes well together. So, three colors, two philosophies, all coming into one alpha flagship. You've got the flame red, glacier blue, and the carbon black, black all looking incredible today together. Uh, now, from a design perspective, one is how it looks, or how the phone itself looks. The other part about design is, when you look at the phone, what you see. And that is also part of the Aura Prime design. And for the first time ever, we are introducing an AMOLED display on a Redmi device. And we are calling this the Horizon AMOLED display. It's, it's, it's a bit more than just a regular amateur. It is true full screen experience. There are no notches, there are no holes, there are no obstructions to your viewing experience. It goes completely edge to edge in this incredible 6.39 inch full HD plus display. It is AMOLED, and we pushed it all the way to the edges, giving you an incredible 91.9 screen to body ratio. Uh, how we've done this is also really great. We've got narrow bezels on the side. It's only 1.85 millimeter. On the top, it's a 2.1. 
I mean, go at the bottom, it's just 3.8. Right? Making it the bare minimum bezels that you can have a phone with this technology without actually compromising on any structural integrity. Uh, the overall trade-off, obviously, is that what you get is absolutely incredible. Uh, with this amazing screen, what we've also got is theater-grade viewing experience. So the color gamut of this panel is actually the DCI P3 color gamut. It's more than NTSC, it's more balanced than the regular NTSC 100%. And this is something that is uh, that was started off by the Visual Cinema Initiatives in America. And now most of your feature films are using the DCI P3 color gamut. <laughs> what that means is when you're watching those movies on your phone, on your K20 Pro, you're going to see exactly how the movie maker intended you to see that movie. Uh, but not just that, you also have a very high brightness panel. This is 600 nits. This is the brightest panel that we've ever put on a phone. And both of these combined give you an incredible overall viewing experience. And we decided to top it off even further. We also have HDR support on the K20 Pro. So whether you're doing content or you're playing games, uh, it has all of this. And I guess I can see a couple of faces. Yes, uh, Netflix is supported. Uh, you do have the wide wine L1 support, uh, which should be coming in on Friday morning on the K20 Pro. So all your favorite games and content have the HDR support coming in. And for the uninitiated, of course, I'm assuming most of the Mii fans know the HDR mode when it comes to gaming, right? So when you're playing PUBG and you move to an HDR, if your phone supports it, you can see a lot more. The difference is actually quite stark. So this is without HDR and with HDR. Let me show you this side by side. And it starts making a whole lot of difference. Again, I'm going to go back to gaming. So imagine you're here and you're gaming. And this is the final circle. For the gamers who know what the final circle means. And there are a lot of snakes in the grass. Not little snakes, but obviously people kind of crush. With HDR mode, chances that you spot them is a lot more. When you go back to a second generation game turbo and you put on the visual enhancement, chances that you'll see them is even higher. So you are actually getting a massive gaming advantage with this particular phone, with all of these optimizations coming in. It is AMOLED, so we decided to go a step further. And for the first time, we've got an always-on display on the K20 Pro. So right on the screen, without you having to touch the phone, you get the basic information as well as all the items for your notification, so you know exactly if you need to pick up the phone or not. And when this was looking so good, we decided to take it one step further, and we added a system-wide dark mode. So your entire UI goes dark. Now, while we are at the screen part of it, We've also added a 7th generation in-screen fingerprint sensor. It's super fast, it's super accurate. We've increased the overall size of the fingerprint sensor so that chances of wrong taps is reduced. So from a Horizon AMOLED display perspective, you get a 6.39 inch Full HD Plus AMOLED display which you can use to watch all your HDR content. Of course, it is a high brightness panel. It's about 600 nits. Uh, it is gentle on the eyes, you've got dark mode, you've got a reading mode certified by EUV, and of course for those people who care, you also have DC dimming, and an incredible 91.9 screen to body ratio. Uh, now this obviously looks absolutely stunning, but this creates a bit of a problem for us. Where do we put the front camera? And we decided to move the camera up. Again, for the very first time, you're moving the camera into a pop-up selfie, uh, and that mechanism sits right on top. Uh, now, this camera obviously uh, adds a bit more versus everyone else. My favorite feature of a pop-up camera has to be the CELS. What is CELS? Camera edge lighting system. This is the first in the world to have this, and of course, apart from looking really cool, it has one key functionality, 
is when you are taking a selfie, everyone in your group is automatically drawn to where the camera is. They automatically end up looking at the camera and you get perfect selfies every time. You don't have to tell people where to look. So it looks stunning as well. Uh, but because this was the first time ever that we had a moving part in any of our smartphones, we had to ensure that we had the best quality parameters. Uh, as Manu mentioned, quality is paramount for Xiaomi India and with the pop-up camera we have to be doubly sure of this. So the pop-up camera is tested for 300,000 times. That means if you're taking 100 selfies a day, it will last you more than 8 years. I think by the time we'll have K100. Uh, now that's one part of it, right? That's the regular uh, operation. What happens if you accidentally drop the K20 Pro while taking a selfie? It also has drop protection. If the sensors are fall from the gyroscope, they tell the CPU which instructs the motor to withdraw the camera. And before it falls, you are safe. Now, in case you dropped it from a very low height and the camera didn't withdraw, you put in another protection to it. The front camera lens is protected by sapphire glass, so you don't get those scratches. So, amazing amount of engineering gone into this one moving part. So, of course, you've got the sapphire lens, you've got uh, a magnetic switch which detects accidental presses for the pop-up camera. Of course, gyroscope detects if it's getting a fall and it retracts the camera. And it is tested for 300,000 cycles, ensuring that through the lifetime of the K20 Pro, you will not face any problems with this one moving part. Uh, now, that's about the quality part of it. Of course, it is a brilliant camera. It is a 20 megapixel camera in the front with all the cool features that you expect from a Xiaomi flagship. So you've got AI scene detection, you've got AI portrait mode, and you also have something called the panorama selfie. So when you are standing with a huge group, just move your phone around and you can capture the entire group in one shot. Now, when we were looking at the pop-up selfie camera, uh, there's one more thing that we had to kind of solve for, and that is face unlock. Now you do have the in-screen fingerprint sensor, but You've added the AI face unlock to the system. Now, of course, the AI face unlock will have to have the pop up camera, right? Uh, that's why the in screen fingerprint sensor is a seventh generation one, and that is the fastest way to unlock the device securely. Uh, now, this is from the front camera perspective. Now, let's move to the back. That's where the fun starts. You've got AI triple camera, again, a first for Redmi series in India. And, and these cameras are interesting, actually. So you've got three cameras. However, there's been a little trend of sorts where you put triple camera, but one camera is pretty much not doing anything. Right? You call it depth. Uh, we decided not to have that. Uh, pretty much like in Xiaomi India, one who has a job for everyone. Uh, for these cameras, each camera has a very critical job to do. Of course, the first one, or the primary camera, is a 48 megapixel camera. And this is Sony IMX586 that a lot of you already know. Uh, has been absolutely loved on some of our devices. This an additional 13 megapixel ultra wide angle camera. Uh, and this is wider than any other ultra wide cameras available in the market today. And we've added a third one, which is a telephoto. So you get incredible details, as well as an ultra-wide mode, and if you need to go closer for portraiture, you also have a 8 MP. None of them are not doing anything, I guess. None of them are just depth sensors. Uh, but not just this. I mean, the camera system is a lot more complex than it. Uh, there are three cameras. Along with that, there's also a laser autofocus. Right? And, of course, you have the dual LED flash. And all of it works together to give you really different perspectives for every capture. So you capture with a 48, 
or you capture with a 13 megapixel ultra wide or you go closer to the subject with a 8 megapixel 2x telephoto. All of them give you a very different result. Essentially, cameras are for the creative folks and this lets you unleash that creativity in the best possible way. Let me talk a bit more on the 48. Now, this is the Sony IMX586. It is the highest resolution camera sensor available today. And if I can probably say that, uh, nobody knows 586 better than Xiaomi does. As we got it on most amount of devices. And of course, you've been tuning it ever since we were one of the first few to launch this. And it's become even better. Now that 48 is combined with the f1.75 virtual lens, giving you incredible details. If you take a look at this particular image, right, the detailing is absolutely top notch. You can see every window. You can actually count the floors on all of these buildings there. And this is the magic of 48. However, what's interesting is this is just a part of that 48. Captures a lot more. And of course, we know the advantage of having a higher resolution camera sensor. Versus the 12 megapixel, not only do you get more information, but you also get better clarity when you're looking, when you're pixel deeping and you're going very close. You get that advantage with the 48 megapixel on the K20 Pro. But 48 megapixel is just not enough. Like I said, you need to know how to tune this. And we've done exactly that. If you compare it with other people carrying a similar sensor, Let's take a look at this one, right? You've got the OnePlus 7 Pro, which also has a 48 megapixel camera, and you've got the K20 Pro. Uh, you can start seeing that difference. Actually, if I go closer, you start seeing even more difference. If you think the, the flower is pixelated, it is by design, it's a Lego. Uh, but you can start seeing the difference in terms of the overall exposure it's able to kind of manage, and the color. And this is where Xiaomi's enhanced AI as well as camera optimization really comes to the fore and stands out. Now that's the 48. I'm going to move on to the next camera, which is the 8 megapixel telephoto. And this comes really well in handy when you're going in for those portraiture shots, when you're trying to capture a subject like this one. And this 8 megapixel does an excellent job there. But not just that, suppose you're trying to take a picture of an object, it again shines. So you can look at this particular image. And this one actually has been shot through one of our fans, uh, Bisuji, who is part of the Mi Explorer program. And this is an absolutely brilliant image there. So thank you, Bisuji. Thank you. Uh, when we look at telephotos, we also did a bit of a comparison here with the 10s as well as the 7 Pro. And let me go a little closer to show you the differences. Not only is the detailing and light on the face a lot better, but if you look at the crown, again, all that information that you can see on the K20 Pro is far ahead of the other two. So it does a much better job there. Now that's been the 48 megapixel, a main camera, and the 8 megapixel telephoto. You've got a third one, and this one obviously is a magical camera lens. It's a 13 megapixel ultra wide. It's 124.8 degrees wider than anything else out there, and of course, let you capture a lot more. Why do you need this? So for example, when you're taking a shot like this, right? now this shot again was by Vivek, he was part of the Mi Explorer program. Uh, when you're taking a shot like this, cameras AI will automatically detect that this is a landmark, you're too close to it, and it will recommend you to move to the ultra-wide mode. And when you move to the ultra-wide mode, you see the entire picture. Putting them side by side, of course, this 124.8 does a magical job when you're trying to capture these landmarks and you're capturing a lot more information from that angle. Uh, and to move between each of these lenses, we made it super easy. So just plain UI gestures, pinch in or pinch out. It's really easy to kind of move between each of these lenses. Uh, there's also a visual indicator of 0.6, 1, and 2x. So it becomes very easy. Uh, from a camera perspective, we've also added a night mode. 
Uh, so you get that incredible 48 megapixels adding on to this night mode through a super pixel technology. And what you get along with that is there's the autofocus. The fast focus even in the dark, which means you get incredible night shots like this one. Uh, now, these are things that you've seen from Xiaomi in the past. There's one more uh, new AI algorithm that I wanted to talk about, and that is called AI skyscaping. Uh, and this is quite incredible. Let me get into the images itself. Now, uh, this is an image that was taken in Pondicherry. It's at about 7 in the morning. Right? So you see that beautiful mist coming into the land, and you've got a nice, peaceful lands uh, landscape happening at the back. Now, with Xiaomi's AI engine, you actually can change the entire sky at one click. And that becomes the main sunlight mode. Uh, it's not just the sky, but if you notice, the entire lighting on the buildings, on the subject, also changes. Look very carefully, I'm going to go into dusk. It looks absolutely realistic. Now, this is a lot of AI firepower coming in behind. But for us, on the K20 Pro, with that much performance, it happens in an instant. And of course, if you want to make it look really dramatic, you also have a sunset mode. Everything changes. The light on the buildings, the light on the subject, as well as, of course, the sky that you notice. So we are introducing this for the first time on the K20 Pro, uh, the AI skyscaping. And of course, one more thing that we fans have loved, we're adding 960 frames per second slow motion. And at 960 frames per second, obviously what you see is a lot more. And along with that, you get 4K UHD recording at 60 frames per second. Now this is slightly different because all three cameras support 4K, not just one. You know, for the people who take videos, uh, that is the ultimate expression of creativity. And by limiting you to just one lens, I think we will be holding you back. And that's why we made this exception. So whether you want to go closer, or you want to take an ultra-wide shot, or just the regular, you get 4K60 in all three. In fact, our team did exactly that. They went out to this amazing uh, state of Kerala and shot this video. All shot on the K20 Pro. Take a look. having all three lenses and the ability to use all three very well, uh, you get results like that. Now, moving on from a camera perspective, you also have Google Lens built into the viewfinder for the very first time. When you've got your camera open, all you need to do is press, a uh, long press on the thing that you want to detect and Google Lens will automatically detect it. It's again a first for the case series. That sums up the camera or my third philosophy, which is incredible camera. So you've got a 48 MP AI triple camera at the back. You've got a 48 MP IMX 586 along with an 8 MP telephoto and a 13 megapixel ultra wide. 
You have KI skyscaping, you have 960 frames per second, you've got 4K video recording on all three lenses, everything that you want from a flagship. And of course, for the first time ever, we've got a, a pop-up camera. Uh, it's a 20 megapixel pop-up camera with, again, all the AI enhancements that you expect from a Xiaomi flagship. Now, coming to the fourth part, or the fourth philosophy of what makes it a flagship. And that is probably the most important one, is having no compromises. Zero compromises on a flagship, which is really hard to find these days. First one, of course, is no compromise on the battery. We have a 4000 mAh large battery. And this, combined with a 7 nanometer chip and an OLED panel, gives you incredible battery life. And on top of that, we've added even more software optimizations. We have a dark mode, you have dynamic power mode, everything else coming in, giving you almost two days of battery life with the K20 Pro. Uh, and there was one more ask, along with battery, is how fast can it charge? So, happy to announce that the K20 Pro will come with solid support, sorry, a 27 watt sonic charge. Uh, we'll talk about the sonic charge in a bit. But what this 27 watt sonic charge does is in just 15 minutes, it'll give you 10 plus hours of 4G voltage top time. So incredible when you really need that power on the go. Uh, of course, in 30 minutes, it goes all the way to 58% of a 4000 mAh power. Uh, no compromise that I want to talk about. And this is something that has played flagships for almost three years now, is slowly all the flagships have suddenly decided that none of the people need a headphone jack. Well, the K20 Pro thinks otherwise. We have the headphone jack. And the headphone jack does much more. Because it is a flagship, it is a high-res audio certified headphone jack. It's got a DAC. And the music on this sounds absolutely incredible if you've got the right drivers for it. Now, not just from a headphone perspective, but even the speaker has been enhanced. It's a larger 0.9 cubic centimeter large speaker box with smart PA. That means it's louder and clearer than ever before. All of it coming in into the K20 Pro. Uh, we've added one new thing as well. Uh, for the first time ever on any of our devices, we are also introducing dual band GPS. So it supports both L1 and L5. The advantage obviously is more accurate positioning and navigation, especially when you're driving around and you get to this circle which has five roads and you don't know exactly which right you have to take. Uh, this accuracy really starts making a difference. Uh, one more thing that we've not compromised is on flash through. It comes certified by P2I. In fact, we said let's not test it ourselves, but we sent it over to our friends over at London. Let's see what they had to say about this. Hey, I'm Richard, head of application for P2I in the UK, and today I want to talk to you about our flagship flash through technology. When Xiaomi reached out to us and explained their vision towards creating a flagship smartphone, we started working on a solution that gives your phone an unrivaled lifetime protection. Flash through technology helps to prevent any liquid that comes near, which ensures that your smartphone is fully protected. We brought our flagship flash through protection together with Xiaomi's improved hardware design, which we have verified here in our UK lab, so that your Redmi K20 or K20 Pro is truly ahead of the curve. So that sums it up. The four key things that you need for the Alpha flagship. You need flagship performance and with Snapdragon's H55 along with the LPDDR4X, our second generation game turbo and our 8 layer graphite cooling, you get exactly that. 
to get an amazing aura prime design. You've got three colors as well as Corning Gorilla Glass 5, both in the front and the back, and along with that, an aluminum frame. Uh, you've got 48 MP AI triple cameras giving you incredible results whether you want to take it on 48 or if you want to go ultra wide on the 13 or really go close to the key. And no compromises on hardware, charging speeds, headphone jack, spill proof, everything that you want in a particular flagship. And sum it all up, we've got an amazing product video. Let's play that please. <laughs> K20 Pro. Now today we've got one more device in the family. We are kickstarting the K series. The K20. Now with the K20, uh, unlike a lot of other brands where they have a huge difference between the Pro and the non-Pro variant, we decided to keep the experiences as close as possible. Right? It is definitely for a slightly different group but we didn't want to compromise on all the latest and greatest things that we've got. So, K20 also comes with this incredible Aura Prime design. It looks stunning. It has the same three colors of Asia Blue, Flame Red, and Carbon Black. It also has Corning Gorilla Glass 5, both in the front and the back, and that uh, aluminum chassis that blends in with the gloss. It also has a Horizon AMOLED display. It is a 6.39 inch. And this also supports HDR content along with the PCI P3 color gamut. It also has an in-screen fingerprint sensor. Uh, one change that you get from the K20 Pro when you move the K20 is we've used Qualcomm's Snapdragon 730. Now, this is the latest 700 series chip from Qualcomm built on an all new 8 nanometer process and overall getting you a lot more powerful uh, experience even in the premium mid-range. In fact, Qualcomm 730 is the third most powerful chip from Qualcomm ever after 855 and 845. So it is actually no slouch. Uh, if you compare it with say a previous generation 700 series, uh, the gap becomes huge. Almost a 40% jump over the Snapdragon 710. Of course, 710 we had introduced with the Mi 8 SE last year in May, so things have to obviously improve quite a bit from then on. Uh, another thing with K20 is you still have an amazing 4000 mAh battery and you will have an 18 watt inbox fast charger. It supports up to 18 watt. Uh, no change in terms of the camera config. We have a 48 megapixel Sony IMX582 sensor and a 13 megapixel ultra wide, giving you incredible shots like this. Or if you go close, you also have amazing macro shots coming in. And with the same camera config and with the same lens config, you obviously get amazing low light images as well, like this one shot on the K20. Now this one is obviously very hard to capture because all the light is coming from the back and this does an uh, incredible job. So the K20 overall, no 
change in the experiences, you still get a super fast Qualcomm Snapdragon 730. It's the latest in 700 series, uh, giving you a new Cryo 470 architecture. It's built on 8 nanometer. It also supports the second generation game turbo that we spoke about. You get enhanced gaming. You have a large battery with an 18 watt fast charge. You have the same Horizon AMOLED display. That beautiful 6.39 inch edge to edge display. No holes, no notches, and with a 7th generation fingerprint sensor built right in. Uh, support for HDR, support for DCI-P3, and of course covered with Corning Gorilla Glass 5. Moving on to the cameras, you have a 48 megapixel IMX 58 2 sensor. Uh, again, a half inch sensor giving you incredible results, combined with a 13 megapixel ultra wide and an 8 megapixel telephoto. You have a 20 megapixel pop-up selfie. This also goes through all the quality checks that the K20 Pro does. And you have obviously the incredible looking or a prime design with the three colors coming in. This also has a 3.5 mm jack and it also supports high-res audio. So pretty much no compromise even if you're moving from the Pro to the K20. Uh, let's look at overall product video for the K20 as well. which shares so much of the experiences of the K20 Pro. Now for the next part, I'd like to call Manu back on stage. And of course, you know what it's all about. Okay. Uh, so we launched two new devices, the Alpha flagship Redmi K20 Pro and Redmi K20. So what should be the size of these devices? Now, before we go there, before we go there, let me just talk about the pricing and manufacturing of flagship devices. Typically, the manufacturing, local manufacturing in India of flagship is very tough because they use very high-end specific components and it's very difficult to manufacture them here in the country. And that's why you see other flagship devices and you see a huge price gap between the international pricing and the India pricing. For example, one plus seven pro sells in China at around forty-five thousand rupees, the highest in variant, and in India at about fifty-three thousand rupees, so eight thousand rupees higher. Uh, iPhone tennis Max, of course, there's no comparison, right? Seventy-nine thousand versus one lakh twenty-four thousand, and that's only because most of the components, either the phones are imported in India, or the majority of components. Are imported in India. Now with Redmi K20 Pro, you're making all the devices here in the country. And 65% of the phone is locally sourced. So yes, we will get all these tax benefits on 65% and we'll pass it on to our VPACs. But yes, we will still have to pay taxes and import duty on remaining 35%. And also on some of the raw material of the 65%. Right? So we'll try and keep it as low as possible. Now for K20 Pro, we were debating on which variants to launch. We also did a poll yesterday. And we believe for K20 Pro, which is the alpha flagship, majority of people do not want 464, do not want 428, even do not want 664. So we're launching only two variants. 
the top two ones, which is 6, 128 and 8, 256. Only the best for all our beef fans. Now, before I go to price, these are really, really great flagship devices. You get the best of everything. You can compare it with OnePlus 7 Pro, Samsung S10, iPhone NS Max. Uh, it has AMOLED display. It has Snapdragon 855, the fastest processor in the world. It has 48 megapixels Sony IMX 586 camera sensor, 40, 20 MP pop up, glass body, 4000 image, a headphone jack, almost every single thing that you can ask for. And if you look at the A256 variant of these flagship devices, one the 7 Pro at 53,000. Samsung S10 does not have a 256GB, it has 8GB, 128GB variant at 62,000. iPhone XS Max does not have 8GB, it has 4GB, 256GB at 1,24,000. And then we have Redmi K20 Pro to the 8GB, 256GB variant of Redmi K20 Pro is being launched at And the 6 GB 128 GB is being launched at 27,999 rupees. So, this is Redmi K20 Pro for you guys. The Alpha flagship starting at rupees 27,999 only. On Redmi K20, we have two variants 6 GB, 64 GB, and 6 GB 128 GB. This is probably one of the best. Big premium devices, Snapdragon 730, which is 40% faster than predecessor 710. It is the third fastest chipset in the world from Qualcomm. 48 MP GA triple camera. It is Gorilla Glass 5, while many other devices use plastic. There's 4000 mAh battery. And the 6 GB 108 GB has been launched at 23 triple line. And the 6 GP 64 GB is being launched at 21 triple line. So this is Redmi K20 for you guys, starting at only 21,999 rupees. Now, few other things. Every single unit of Redmi K20 and K20 Pro will come with a ultra premium hard case inside the box. This is a similar case that we came with Remix 2 and all our mixed series. It costs about 500 rupees and every single phone will come with this hard case inside the box. We have one more variant that we haven't spoken about. And this is a variant that we teased yesterday. And we are calling this as a signature edition. Now this is made of pure gold. This is not gold coating. This is not uh, uh, just any small layer of gold, it's actually made of gold and it is diamond studded as you can see in the bottom and I'm carrying one of these phones with me. So we'll have very few units, of course this is made of real gold, so we we'll only have 20 units of this phone being made in India. And just the cost of making this phone, the cost of gold plus diamond plus making charges is 4 lakh 80,000 rupees. We haven't finalized the price of this one and how much will be selling. We haven't decided the process in which we will sell these devices. But probably if you were to price it, we will give the hardware, the non-gold hardware for free. Which means they can actually launch the device at just 4 lakh 80,000 rupees. So, when can you buy Redmi K20 K20 Pro? Now, many of you guys gave us feedback that you do not like flight sale and you would want us to do something better. And I completely agree. So, we've been setting up a lot more factories so that everybody who wants to buy our devices can buy them easily. And so, for K20 K20 Pro, we came up with a new mechanism called as Alpha Sale. And happy to share that 70,000 people participated in this. And this is incredible because this is not like any other blind sale. People actually paid money 
to be part of this alpha state. These are state orders. So for all these 70,000 people, they can complete the transactions today, starting 8 p.m. on me.com and Flipkart. You can also redeem your 855 rupees coupon. And for all your alpha users, people who have put their faith in us, who pay 855 rupees even without knowing the specifics or about the price, we have something special for you guys. We are going to give a 2,000 rupee cash back to all the alpha users if they use an ICT bank credit card. And for you, me fans, who could not participate in Alpha Sale, there is one last chance. You can go to Me Home tomorrow, which is 18th, and you can get the same cashback offer across all Me Home stores across the country. Now, everybody else, where can you buy Redmi T20 and T20 Pro? So, the first flagship that we launched in India was Me 3. And this was sold on 22nd July 2014. At that point of time, we only had 10,000 units because a lot of people told us that Xiaomi can never succeed in India. Like nobody even knows how to pronounce the name Xiaomi, right? So why should somebody come and buy a Xiaomi phone? So we had 10,000 phones because we had 10,000 followers on Facebook. He said, these 10,000 people will at least come and buy a phone. And on that day, the first sale day, this is what had happened. Uh, Flipkart crashed for the first time in the history of Flipkart. About half a million people turned up. It seems a small number today, half a million, but it was a massive number that, at that point of time five years ago. And to buy these 10,000 phones, about five lakh people or half a million people turned up. So we just think 22nd July is a great day for us. So the first sale of the K20, K20 Pro is going to be on 22nd July. Across me.com, Flipkart, and Mihon stores, and soon we, it will be available across all our offline stores. Now, we also have a special offer for people who have not participated in Alpha Sale. We will be giving a thousand rupee cash back if you use ICC bank card. We are also introducing the 27 watt. This is something a lot of you guys asked for. So, inside the box, you get an 18 watt charger for both the T20 and T20 Pro. But you can buy a 27 watt Sonic charge adapter from me.com. And this we are launching at rupees 999. This is really incredible because if you see the Woop charger at 20 watts is similar price, and the uh, Rust charger at 30 watts is at about 1500 rupees. And we are giving the 27 watt Sonic charge at 999. We are also launching the cases. So this is the ultra premium case in different colors, three different colors that you can also from me.com, from we also partner agent. So these are the two devices that we launched today, guys, Redmi K20 and K20 Pro. We have a few other small surprises planned for you. Let's start with the first one. We are launching the neckband Bluetooth earphones. Um, we are launching uh, this is this can be voice control and this is being launched at only 1,599. And we've also started the crowdfunding for the rechargeable LED lamp. This is live on me.com right now, so you can go and participate in the crowdfunding. This starts at only 1,299, and you can go and buy it or participate in the crowdfunding on me.com. So that's all guys from our side. We're launching Redmi K20, Redmi K20 Pro, 
the ultimate flagship killer. And then we are launching two new devices, two new ecosystem products, which are rechargeable LED lamps and the tech uh, So with this, thank you so much everybody for joining in and we'll do a quick photo op. I'll call Anuj and Raghu on stage. So beautifully designed.